Bride made profit on Bachelorette. Sister-in-law drama. So much tea. I'm glad I can spill to my Reddit community because I can't gossip about it to my family. So about six months ago, the bride planned her destination bachelorette trip and charged each of the 11 girls $650 for the Airbnb. I was salty about the high cost, but it's my sister-in-law, so I sucked it up and I paid her. I also was suspicious about the high as fuck price, so I did cross-check the Airbnb listing and it checked out. Yes, this bee wanted a $2,300 a night beachfront house. Well, today I'm chatting about wedding stuff with my brother, who is marrying my future sister-in-law, and he said something along the lines of, quote, what a relief her dad paid for the Airbnb, because that would have been so expensive for your group. I about choked. I said, hey, are you sure about that? Because all 11 girls paid $650 for the house alone. Maybe run it by her, dot, dot, dot. His face turned purple. So I take it, he had no idea. To add to the greed going on here, when I got married, I flew her out, paid for her accommodations, paid for hair and makeup, paid for her bridesmaid's dress, and paid transportation because she was going through a hard time. Now she has the balls to steal from me? I get that weddings are expensive, but don't have one if it requires stealing from your bridesmaids. I'm assuming I'm the only bridesmaid who is aware of what's going on here. Not sure if I should spill to the group or just let it go. There's a chance her dad stepped in and paid for it after the fact, and she just chose not to refund us. I'm not clear on the exact situation, and I want to avoid embarrassing my brother. Update number one. Thanks for all of the advice and support. Yes, I agree with most of you who are saying I'm morally obligated to spill the beans because $650 is not child's play. This is what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to talk to my brother and give him a chance to clear it up with sister-in-law. Before I make a scene, I want to understand what's really going on. For example, did daddy pay for the trip, but sister-in-law decided to put that towards a different wedding expense? Things like that. That answer will determine when slash how I tell the rest of the bridesmaids. I'm going to give my brother only one to two days because this trip is literally next week. So update number two, which is coming three days after update number one. All right. So I regrouped with my brother. My mom also stepped in, bypassed my brother, and got some more info directly from her dad. All caps. Here's the T. Future sister-in-law's dad did not offer to cover the cost until a few months after we all paid for the trip. This was after he found out the cost and was pissed that she chose a $2,300 a night house and then asked us to pay. Apparently, he threatened not to pay for the wedding if she added more expenses onto the wedding party. Turns out wow. she originally wanted nice it him. in the Maldives and he forbid her. According to my mom, who chatted with him directly, he felt embarrassed when he heard about the Airbnb price and wanted to save face with my side of the family. So he gave sister-in-law about 7K to cover the cost of the house. She was supposed to refund us, but obviously that never happened. Oh, that is, that's shitty. All caps. This is where it gets good. So my mom went total FBI and learned that in addition to not paying us, sister-in-law didn't put the money towards a different wedding expense either. All caps. She doesn't have it. So where did it go? What did she spend it on? There is currently a full-blown investigation going down between our two families right now. I've been asked by my mom not to alert the bridesmaids just yet until we get the last bits of info and come to a resolution with both sister-in-law and her dad. But we will tell them ASAP one way or another. I made a new friend last year at school and we got really close because we both worked as servers in the past and knew a lot of the same people and we are now pursuing the same career in nursing as mature students. She is married with two kids and I've been single for nearly six years waiting for the right guy to come into my life. I have so much respect for her and we have genuinely similar outlooks on life and life experiences. A couple of weeks ago, she asked me if I would be willing to work a catering job with her and her husband. I said yes because I'm always willing to help out a friend. Well, when I got to this catering, I was floored. I have never been so attracted to someone in my life as I was to her husband. Oops. We worked together fine and we all went out for a drink after 
and I had too much to drink. I got sick and they brought me a bucket and water. Next thing I knew, I was waking up in the morning holding her husband's hand. I would like to point out that while I thought her husband was cute, I never made a move on him. So I don't know how I ended up sleeping on the pullout couch with him in the middle and my friend on the other side. As soon as I was sober enough to drive, I went home and felt horrible guilt about what happened. Unsure about whether I should tell my friend what happened or if it was even anything. Later that night, her husband messaged me on Instagram and told me that she was still sleeping. I saw it, but I didn't answer because I didn't know what he was trying to start. The next day, my friend texted me and I apologized for staying the night and said that I appreciated her taking care of me. I continued to feel guilt, but I also thought of her husband just in like a celebrity crush kind of way where nothing would or could ever happen. Fast forward to Tuesday and I get a Facebook friend request from this guy. I didn't accept. I got a message from him too, quoting something funny that I had said when I was drunk. Next thing I know, I have the same message coming from my friend's phone. I just answered, ha ha. At this point, he answered from her phone saying, quote, it's me. Friend is upstairs with our kids. I said, quote, Oh, okay. Have her call me when she gets a chance. Then I get another message from her husband on Facebook saying, quote, ignored. At this point, I responded calling him out saying I knew what he was doing and I was the wrong person. We were going to work another catering job that next weekend together though. So I wanted to be civil. I apologized for being drunk the other day and he said, no complaints. I hope you had fun. I was worried because I didn't know what happened with him when I was drunk. Right. She could have blacked out. She could have had a total blackout and they could have had a total affair and she has no idea. But if he was talking like that, it couldn't have been good. He gave me his number and told me to text him. I said, no, I'm good. I told him to appreciate his life and be a good person. Then he told me to text again. So I did. And I called him out again. And the next thing I knew, we were texting about everything and anything until 5 a.m. And it certainly wasn't all appropriate. In less than 24 hours, we sent 2,000 plus messages. I was studying with my friend the next day and I had never felt so much guilt in my life. Well, we worked another event on the weekend. I tried to back out, but my friend didn't get back to me and I didn't want to leave them high and dry. I also saved the day because I brought a few things they needed for the event that they didn't have. Well, after the event, we were cleaning together and her husband kissed me. He wanted to do more, but I felt so guilty. I left. I have seen my friend a couple of times since then, but I never want to see her husband again. He is very dreamy, but I've already been such a shitty friend and I don't think I can fix it. Ideal outcome. I can get over my guilt of this situation and be strong enough not to talk to her husband again or be the blame for the ruin of my friend's family. Additional, I have to go to school with this girl for the next three years. It's a very very small program. We also come from a very small city and I know all the same people as this couple from all of us working in the restaurant industry for so long. Stay away from him because he, 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 he's a pig. He's a pig. He knows what he's doing. He's and playing this flirty game. Text me, text me. And then you bite in and you text him, girl, what the fuck are you doing? Very th that, Boundaries. There you are. So Boundaries. There's where you, you have a friendship. I don't care how dreamy he is. He was really a rat. And if he did it to her, he would do it to you. You. He would 100%. Is he so dreamy? Is a guy who's married with kids and stepping out on his wife dreamy? Fuck no. He's a he I like the word rat. But rats get a bad rep when they don't deserve it. He is just pawn scum. Bottom right. of the barrel pawn scum. I want to drop kick him into orbit. He is such a piece of Me 24 male with my girlfriend 23 female has princess syndrome. I have been with my girlfriend for about five months. We've been casual friends since college, but only been dating after she graduated. We get along really well. When I say princess syndrome, I don't mean that she's spoiled or entitled no. because she isn't. Her clothes seem to take over her life. She dresses like a sort of fairy tale princess oh. on a near daily basis, excluding at work. Long frilly skirts, lacy blouses, things like that. It works for her because she's very pretty and can pull it off. <laughs> At first, I found it to be very endearing, but then I became aware of how much she spends on her outfits. She runs a blog that has a sizable amount of followers, and she's constantly posting outfit pictures, links to clothing items, and whatnot. She spends a few hours a day on her blog, at least. Oh, should I say that this was also posted in August 12th, 2014. Oh. Uh -huh. So if you're hearing blog... I was like, and not Instagram mean. page or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, is it just me? Like, I, was like, I heard blogging. I was like, and you guys are just like, 
And I was like, okay, well, maybe we're it's just older. Me. I'm like, yeah, yeah, a blog sounds blog. normal. Yeah, like, <laughs> blog I'm writing a blog right now. Actually. He's like, I just vent yeah. about this podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I read my own blog every morning <laughs> with a cup of coffee. I also <laughs> blog about the. <laughs> <laughs> At first, I found it to be very endearing, but then I became aware of how much she spends on her outfits. She runs a blog that has a sizable amount of followers, and she's constantly posting outfit pics, posts to the clothing items, and whatnot. She spends a few hours a day on her blog, at least. Then she spends time sewing items for new outfits or for her Etsy store. When we go out, we get a lot of stares at what she's wearing. I've also caught people sneaking pictures of her on their cell phones. This attention makes me uncomfortable. I've asked her to tone it down a bit, but she took it to me not wearing anything in her hair when we're out together. (laughs) I've told her several times that I love her just the way she is, but she seems to brush it off. I had hoped when she started a new job in the career of her choice that she would become more serious, but her new boss and coworkers encourage her. I worry that people won't take her seriously or miss how kind and intelligent she is. How can I talk to her about her dressing more appropriately without hurting her feelings? Uh, So this is the update post from 2014. I didn't plan on updating, but things changed. I realized for my last post that I need to be more supportive, but also communicate how she could dress down on certain occasions so we can both be more comfortable. Well, I never got the chance to talk to her about it. Last week, she called me and wanted to stop by my apartment after work. When she got there, I offered to make dinner, but she said she couldn't stay and we had to talk. (laughs) I jokingly asked if she was breaking up with me and she looked really guilty. (laughs) She looked really guilty and you could see where this is going. Yep. We talked about how we were in different places in life and how we had different goals for the future. Well, she talked, but I agreed. It was a pretty amicable breakup, even though I felt blindsided. We agreed to stay friends. I've never been dumb before and it's really awful. I'm having trouble with the whole social media thing post breakup. I went away to keep in touch with her, but as soon as her relationship status changed, all of these alternative-looking guys have been liking her posts and commenting on her photos. Facebook, man. (laughs) I don't think she's seeing these guys, but it still hurts. My friends want to set me up on a date, but I don't think it's a good... I don't know if it's a good idea. And then... um, So this is the update from almost 10 years later. I was going through an old, old email and found this account again. I'm surprised I could still log in even more by the amount of people who reached out to me. It was a bit embarrassing to relive this breakup from almost 10 years ago. In retrospect, it wasn't meant to be. I was really more from getting dumped than the loss of the relationship. I'm 33 now, and I'm married to a wonderful woman, 31 female, for four years. I learned my lesson about supporting my significant other's hobbies. My wife loves running and baking. We have a daughter who's turning three this year. I want her to be free to express herself how she likes, as long as it's safe, of course. I would do anything for them. I'm still friends with my ex on social media. We don't talk, but we like each other's posts. She's married to another woman now who also dresses differently. It's not as frilly as she used to dress, but it's still unusual. Her pictures look like something out of Anne of Green Gables. She seems very happy on their farm together. My childhood sweetheart turned up at my door 14 years later. Story time. Guys, this is a story that was sent in and I actually am tearing up hearing it. You need to listen to this. So I had this boyfriend who's my first boyfriend called Steve. We got together when we were 14 years old. In total, we were together for 18 months. But you know, at that age, you just think everything's going to last a lifetime. It was so undeniable, even looking back, that we loved each other. Anyway, even though we were really, really young, we ended up... You know, he didn't have a clue, right? And I ended up getting pregnant. And looking back at the time, I remember being absolutely over the moon. I was so excited. I didn't even think about like the whole of my future completely changing. At this point, I was still in school and I hadn't even sat my GCSEs. I had so much to learn from every single aspect of my life. I actually made the decision to not keep the baby. This was a decision that I have regretted my whole life. I think about it every day as an adult. And after all of this, we were maybe about 15. This is when Steve decided to go and cheat on me with not one, not two, but three other girls from our school. Literally weeks after the most traumatic event of my life. And that was it. That was the end. We split up and we never spoke again. No contact after the day we broke up and we both continued on. We have both changed so much. But to 14 years later, 
over the years i never forgot about steve i just never really thought about him cut to 14 years later i and i have two boys and i'm sat at my mum's house just having a little catch up with her we hear a little knock at the door safe to say we were both absolutely baffled as to who it could be because we weren't really expecting anyone it was like middle of the afternoon so i'm like listen mum, i'll go open it i'll go see what the situation is i open the door and stood in front of me is this big bearded man those beautiful eyes the most beautiful face i had honestly seen in the past 14 years his first words to me were you don't remember me do you i was in so much shock i put my head in my hands and when i put my head in my hands i just got this flashback to what he looked like when we were 14 and 15. i looked up and i was just like is it you steve he had known where to come because it was the house that i lived at when we were together all those years ago my mum had never ever moved fast forward another 18 months we now live together. I am the happiest I have been since I was 14 years old. Happiness is out there. Sometimes it even comes knocking at your door. I love love and this story is my favourite story ever. I wish you guys the lifetime of happiness. I'm so glad that you found each other again. I hope he cares for you. I hope he looks after you. I hope he looks after your children as well. Please let me know if there are any other updates. Please let me know if you get married.